Hey viewers, George here to talk about uh, episode 16 of Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures. <laughs> Before we start talking about this episode, I have to talk about the one really disturbing thing that this episode ep this episode decided to uh, lay on us. Um, this... This caught me fucking off guard, I will tell you that much. Um, Pac-Man and friends are eating, uh, you know, sitting around, and then Inky, Blinky, Pinky, and Clyde come out of uh, nowhere, and one of them drops a bit of slime on one of their burgers that they're eating, and, and it's followed by saying, I'm sorry about that, I do that sometimes when I get excited. Pac-Man and the Ghostly Ventures, episode 16, made a joke about a ghost coming, and getting extremely excited, and just smothering its semen all over the place. This puts a whole new meaning to what the ghosts kind of drop around, what their ectoplasm is, so to speak, if that, when they get excited, they start dropping it, or they're rather prone to dropping it, uh, apparently ghosts in the Pac-Man universe are made of semen. I, 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 how else do you interpretate that? Why the fuck would you add that? This is a kid show! I can understand, you know, Tucking an adult humor here and there, but that's that's a whole new level. That's disgusting. Don't do that. Especially when it's so fucking obvious. God damn it! That just honestly, the fucking episode starts off, and it came it came out of nowhere. They come in and he comes out like <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> As for the rest of the episode, just yeah. Um, so episode sixteen, basically Petraeus uh, takes up a deal with the, a witch from the Netherworld to put bad luck onto Pac-Man and. Uh, fucking Pac-Man gets bad luck and I mean there there's bad luck and then there's the ridiculous slapsticky humor that uh, they tried to throw here just it his bad luck is like a ro like a Rue Goldberg machine <laughs> of some sort where one thing just kind of leads to another and it's supposed to be funny because it's silly and he slides around and shit happens. It's like Final Destination, but not violent. You know, uh, beyond that though, this, the episode really doesn't amount to anything. Uh, Pac-Man and his friends are saved because the deal that Petraeus made is he had to marry the witch. But of course, apparently a witch is really disgusting like I I never really under I couldn't I can't really understand stand this guy's uh motivation he wants to take over Pac world and get rid of Pac-Man but he's not gonna do it to the lengths of where he will marry a witch which could easily assist him in doing that and it's not like it's an ugly witch either the the, the worst thing about it is she has like about five warts on her nose and I mean, it could be worse. There's been a lot more, you know, less pleasant witch designs in history. This one's not the worst. And I mean, he's a ghost. Who gives a fucking fuck? Like, his priorities are all over the place. Like, he's one of the worst villains ever. That he won't go to the extreme lengths that he probably should in order to satisfy his needs of being evil. 
I mean, like, of course he knew that was, that's what's going to happen. They they lure, they basically were like, yeah, this is how it's going to end. You know, that's the only way we can figure how to get Pac-Man out of this situation is, you know, the villain's fucking ego. Stupid. Uh, yeah, this episode doesn't really lead much else to it. Apparently, there was actually one plan at the beginning where Petraeus was had the ghosts in the milk. Like they, I guess they liquefy themselves or they stuck themselves in the milk. So that way when they get when pack people drink them, they get possessed. I'm not really sure how that works. Because one, the ghost can possess them to begin with. It's, that's been established. We had a fucking episode on that. So I don't know why you have to be drank in order to possess them. Why not just possess them? Like, <laughs> here, here's the problem with the, the ghosts. And how fucking stupid they are. And how their behavior is so well tailored to suiting the freaking uh, heroes needs in defeating them. Is that they don't use common sense. I mean, if I was evil... And I was a ghost, and I had the ability to possess people. Why not do it when the fucking hero who can defeat you is not around, and slowly take over Pac Land, one Pac person or one or Pac family at a time, without him even knowing? It's not like it's that hard. They proven they could have done that, and they didn't. They've proven they can easily just possess them, and they don't. I mean, like. It's not that hard. I'm pretty sure the writers were like, fuck, man, like, the one thing ghosts can do well, and how how do we, how do we use it? It's like, no, obviously you know how you can use it. Here, here's the thing, not just about Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures, a lot of cartoons and uh, animes and a lot of TV shows usually do this because uh, the commitment... That would be have to that would be made into developing store uh, like a a short storyline based around this concept, where they usually start have like an episode, and it, it kind of starts off with an interesting thing like oh one of the characters, uh, is being mind controlled or is forced into evil or gets possessed or some shit like that, and of course by the end of the episode everything gets solved. But I mean, like, they could have gone for, like, an ep another episode or two and developed that concept a bit more to kind of be like, hey, we're doing things a little different. Every show does this. And, I mean, like, <laughs> I, I, of course I did not expect Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures to, you know, be different from everyone else. It seems rather content in copying what every other fucking... You know, show does like the set formula of how shows work, but if you have that concept, if you have that ability to create some sort of small contained story within a few episodes, why not take it? Why not see where it takes you? Like, <laughs> I. I remember Yuasha did it twice, where they had, like, an episode, like, two different episodes, where that was the case, where, like, Kagome got controlled into evil, and by the end of the episode, everything worked out fine. There was another one that was similar to that. And it's just like, come on! That would have been interesting if they just carried it on a little longer and see how that kind of dynamic, uh, you know, forces the heroes into changing their positions and stuff like that. I'm just saying it's not a hard idea to follow through with. And I'm not saying you have to stick with it, you know, that's set in stone. You can find a way out, but why not expand it a little bit and have fun with it? You know, you all, you don't I don't know. That's my little rant about just general shows and stuff like that that tends to go with that route. And sometimes even movies do that too where they like dwell on that for, like, a small amount of time, even though it was kind of the concept of the whole movie, and they don't really, it doesn't feel like they utilize it enough. But that's, 
that's my kind of rant as from a writing, <laughs> directing perspective uh, I have, where it's just kind of like, it's an easy idea, no one's done it before. Like, <laughs> okay, uh, other things. So, this episode is basically like Pac-Man is forced into bad luck, because apparently he has extremely good luck, which, if that was the case, we wouldn't have to sit through this show. Because <laughs> he had good luck, then there'd be no fucking point in the show. Um, and he even ends off with fucking God sending a thunderbolt to cook his burger for him. Like, that's his fucking good fortune that he has. It's just like, what? That's not how that works. God fucking hates the show, too. And don't, don't you tell me God doesn't think differently of this show. <laughs> no one likes it. Uh, um, there's not really much else to talk about this show. I mean, Pac-Man just has a series of bad luck and the slapstick sucks balls. Um, I don't know. They try to, to talk about the concepts of bad luck. I mean, here's something the, sh uh, the show could have done. And they, and I've touched on this with another episode forget which one it was, is the one where he gets a zit, and they really blow that fucking out of proportion, uh, instead of actually trying to create a meaningful, some sort of message or reassurance that kids could take away from it, uh, to utilize in their daily lives about how the concept of growing up, so to speak. And here's another chance they had to take uh, that concept and create some sort of uh, message that kids could take away from it after watching it, and it's the fact that honestly, I, I mean, you can have your own opinions on this, whether or not you believe in bad luck and good luck and karma and all that. Personally, though, I don't technically believe in that shit. Technically, I don't really believe in that stuff because it doesn't make any fucking sense when you think about it in the perspective of the grand scale of things of life. It's kind of like saying, you know, this big natural disaster happened because some guy just had really bad luck that day. That's not how that works. Just things happen. Life happens. It's just how it works. But, um, I know that's it's a terrible way of explaining it, but I'm pretty sure most of you can catch my drift there. But, like, when it comes to, like, the good luck and the bad luck perspective, it really is a, a matter of perspective about how you view certain things. You know, you have a terrible day at work and things just don't go well is it because you're you have a bad luck or you just you're viewing it like that because a series of events is skewing your perception uh, of things that happen as opposed to you know you wake up one morning the sun is shining it's a fantastic day out and just that kind of sets your mood to uh, see things in a bit more of a brighter light, essentially. Whereas if it's, like, a particular day that's maybe not exactly happy or, uh, fond for you, like, I don't know, like the anniversary of a relative's death, then you kind of start seeing things in a more negative light. Yes, you know, just how human emotions work. And the episode could have gone that route and kind of seen, like, you know, gee, you only really have bad luck because you kind of review it as bad luck or something like that. Like, they could have insert that kind of message in there because, like, yeah, uh, they go down the route of it being the curse and shit like that. That's, of course, they were. But, I mean, like, even then, one, like, the, one of the characters is a skeptic about the witchcrafting of everything. And it's kind of just like, no, there's no such thing as good luck or bad luck. Like, if they kind of went more with that, to kind of reinforce kids into kind of allowing them to be more open-minded, essentially. And even if they do, even if bad luck does exist for some reason, and I'm wrong, at the very least, you kind of uh, embed in kids that, like, it doesn't really exist. It's how you view things. I'm just saying, as a show, as a perspective from a show where a lot of the time there's something that a child could take away from it and kind of, like, use it 
in their daily lives, like some sort of message or some sort of concept that's being brought up. I'm not saying it has to do it all the time. I mean, SpongeBob's a perfect example. Not every episode you're going to have something to take away from it. Sometimes they're just a really bizarre episode. But, like, I don't know. There's an, op there's an opportunity there for them to try uh, and at least go with some sort of decent amount of writing skills to be set. And it just feels like it was wasted, really. And a lot of times that ends up happening. Like I said with that previous episode where Pac-Man uh, has a zit and they just blow the whole thing out of proportion uh, to the most unrealistic uh, ways where, one, it's not fucking funny to begin with, and two, it kind of, I think it would kind of scare kids a little bit more into, you know, when they hit puberty and when they start, you know, things start happening uh, to them, like they start, you know, growing facial hair or like zits or whatever and it's shows like this kind of point as being a natural even though it's very natural <laughs> I don't know that's just how I see it. I just see it as a, you know the anti message essentially <laughs> which like the thing kids should not be taken away from it and said so they should be viewing it as like you know it's a natural thing and some people are complete jerkwads about it that's that's how I see it. Um, overall, though, besides the ghosts coming and essentially being enforced as a uh, ghost being made out of not ectoplasm but semen instead, uh, there was nothing really noteworthy in this episode. <laughs> I, I'm still kind of shocked about that 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 fucking happened where he just drops his goo on a burger and he just. He's like, sorry, I do that sometimes when I get excited. That fucking, you know... <laughs> I didn't expect that. That was like whiplash. <laughs> I think that's like the only time the show's actually... has a meaning to it, like a purpose into scene. It's just for that one scene. That one scene. If... If there is something you can take away from the show, if there are two things I should say that you can take away from the show, it's one is a great way to learn how not to write a fucking show, especially a kid's cartoon show, and two, it is to watch that scene where a ghost drops goo and basically says, sorry, I get excited, so I start coming all over the place. <sighs> Yeah, that that that's like the takeaway message from the show now. Like <laughs> people are gonna be should start walking the streets and be like, Hey, did you see that show, that kid show that Disney put out? Uh where a ghost comes and they'll be like, You mean a ghost comes in the room? And they're like, No, 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 no. A ghost just splooges all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> drop semen on a fucking hamburger. Yes, Disney made it. Disney Animations supports it. And kids watch it. <laughs> and then they'd be like, no, I, didn't, I thought Disney was better than that. They're not. <laughs> Especially when it comes to their TV stuff. They really drop the ball on that a lot of times. Uh... Yeah, there's nothing really else. I mean... I, I, I'm i kind of happy that that happened at the beginning of the episode. Because if it happened at the end, that's the only thing I would have fucking talked about. Because that would just distract the shit out of me from the rest of what happened in that episode. I'd be like, I'm sorry, I can't really talk about the rest of the episode. Because this just fucking came out of nowhere at the end. But thankfully it happened at the beginning. So I can kind of gather my thoughts as bullshit happened throughout the episode. And all I have to do is kind of be like, yeah, th this is the basic. But I mean, this happened at the beginning. <laughs> and it took me a while to process why the fuck they would do that. And I still don't know why the hell they would do that. Actually, I do. It's because they want to try to add some adult humor into it. But you can only really do that when it's subtle. That was could not be taken any other way. Like... <laughs> Kids are gonna, 
kids of this generation who have watched Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures will grow up forever knowing that <laughs> when they get excited and, you know, whatnot, that it is ectoplasm that is coming out of them. <laughs> I just... I can't fucking believe that. <laughs> that kind of just makes my day. And, like, the day's practically over. <laughs> so... Oh. It's the kind of thing where, we're like, if I have a bad day at work, I just have to remember, we live in a world where Disney put out a cartoon based on the Pac-Man video game series where a ghost just fucking drops semen on a hamburger. <laughs> and that puts a smile on my face because I fucking don't know why. <laughs> just because of how fucking stupid that is, I guess. I don't know. It just... <laughs> we live in a world like that. <laughs> Among other things, of course. But, um... Yeah, sorry. I, I, I had to just derail greatly from that. Just because of the repercussions of something like that. I could only imagine, you know, what was going through those writers' heads when they're like, alright, uh... So the ghosts come, and we need to do something funny here, guys. The, the ghosts have to come into the scene. Uh, you know, they just come out of nowhere, and um, I, I don't know what they're gonna, what they should do. They're standing there. They come in, and then I'm, I'm sure, like the other writers, like, just make it a joke about him, you know, dropping goo, and we'll have the most hugest innuendo ever as he just announces that he gets really excited and drops semen I really don't know how that would come about what what are these writers meetings like like <laughs> I know for a fact that anytime I'm writing something it is the most lonely depressing experience in the world but the end result is the most fantastic thing in the world. <laughs> That's why I love it. But... <laughs> Some guy wrote that. <laughs> or a team wrote that. I'm pretty sure like two people are on the writing staff of this or whatever. Like most things. And someone wrote that in. For some fucking reason. So something was just like, this has to be in the episode. This has to be We're putting this in. I don't care. It's going in. Send off. Rough draft. Taking as the final draft. Um. So yeah. <laughs> That's all I have to say. I'm sorry for derailing a little bit at that about that, but... You can't blame me. You really cannot blame me for that. That is golden material right there. And it's not even out on DVD yet. <laughs> at least... A bunch of the fucking later episodes definitely are not. Okay. So. With that all said and done. Until next time. Keep on gaming. <laughs>